Hello everyone and welcome to an unboxing of an all-in pledge level for Street Fighter the miniature game by Jasco Games. Uh, it came out on Kickstarter quite a while ago, quite a few years ago now. It has been delayed and delayed and delayed but finally it is here and it isn't just these two boxes, there is a plethora of other boxes behind here that we're going to look at in time. Might be here a while, we don't know and uh, yeah we're just going to take a look at it. I backed this so long ago, it kind of it breaks one of the rules I usually have for when backing things on Kickstarter, which is that it comes with pre-painted miniatures. I'm not a good painter, but I still like painting. But this is the exception. I, I liked Street Fighter when I was a kid. I played tons of Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, um, a little bit of Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter 3, then I kind of like didn't stick with the series after that. But very fond memories of Street Fighter 2 Turbo and just Street Fighter 2. And this did seem interesting, like how do you how do you do a beat em up in a, a 3D miniature game format? And they did an okay job, I think. And we'll take a look at the quality of the pre-painted miniatures and what comes in the boxes bit by bit. Starting with the core box, then the boss expansion, which is also kind of a cooperative mode because you're going up against an AI. And then the stretch goals and the additional packs, which are characters from like games layered than Street Fighter 2. We're going to start with this core box though, so I'm going to move everything else out of the way and we will get started. So here is the core box, but I thought I should also point out first of all, uh, with your order you also get a sheet of stickers, uh, which obviously show the car mini game from Street Fighter 2 where you beat up the car for bonus points. It's in this box as cards, but I believe they were misprinted, so like two of one of the corners were included by mistake. So this is their solution to that. You can put the stickers over every part or just the part that's wrong. But yeah, that's their solution to it, and it comes in the box. Just as in the box that all the other boxes came in, I'm surprised it wasn't battered. But anyway, this is a nice looking box. It kind of reminds me of Steamforge Games' quality of box, which is a compliment. There's a sneak peek at what's inside. It looks like Sakura is doing something strange to Zangief's crotch in that picture, for some reason. Her name is Sakura, right? I don't remember the characters after two very well. Let's get the lid off. Alright, put that behind there. So we have a rulebook. I believe there is already an FEQ slash errata available digitally for free, as well as a, a free digital version of this rulebook. So we've got, what, 31 pages if you include how to build your stuff? Yeah. Don't know why it's wide page format. That doesn't seem particularly necessary. But yeah, it is a card based system. And you can see some of the cards there. Is that lighting a little off? No, it seems okay. The art on the cards looks great. I hope the quality is at least on par with uh, Night Models cards. So yeah, we're not going to sit and look through every page, but you have a row book. There is also an FAQ, and again, there is some diagrams on how to build terrain and your maps. Speaking of which, we have the first bit of cardboard, cardboard trees. Once you've made them, you can't unmake them easily, which I, I already knew going in, which is a little annoying. Placement markers, round markers, discard, health, etc. I'm not going to poke out the, the cardboard right now. Some crates and whatnot for the Gaio level. Oh yeah, and the missiles and whatnot. Good quality card, it's thick. Punch board, that's what they're called. It even tells you in the bottom left of each one of them. More missiles, more crates. Because you can you can hit people into scenery in this to do extra damage. A little bit like Monster Apocalypse, I guess, kind of. And some more Sakura trees, and some crates. Two of those, and then the map the double-sided map, I believe, that comes with the game is two by two, I think. Oh, and we can see the miniatures. Let me just see. Yeah, one side is Guy's level, and then the other side is kind of like just the the garden. Uh, I'm not going to be able to fit this in frame immediately. The quality looks good, though. So that's like one quarter of it. And then on the other side, can I show? Where are we? Can I show a little bit? of the guy old map, I can, sort of. There is a little bit. That's half. So that's where the airplane is and you would set up the scenery on these squares. The miniatures move on these squares to attack. And then we have cards and dials. So these are health bars along the top. They look bad from behind. Like you could have put an extra bit of card to make that look better. 
but on the front they look nice enough. See, so you, you can monitor your health by spinning the larger wheel and the little wheel is for your hyper bar in the bottom right. And you get four of these presumably, yep, you do indeed, because it's two to four player. Oh, actually no, you get more. <laughs> okay. Well, how many was that? Five, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. I get, oh yeah, it is six max. You know, it can be up to three on three teams. I will say at a glance, the miniatures look very nicely uh, pre-painted. So then we have quick reference on how to attack revolution, resolution rather, damage triggers, what the special words on commands mean. And there's presumably one there for each player, so there are six. You have a bag of dice, which I'm sure work as intended. Defense dice and attack dice, I think, or maybe they both act as the same thing. I don't quite remember, because again, it has been a while. Nice looking dice, though. So the fists are a number of hits, and then you get a fist and a block, or just a block, and then a miss, presumably. So each one of these is the deck required to play as that character. So you're going to want a lot of rubber bands or poly wallets for these when you're not using the characters. So for instance, this is Zangief's deck. That's his character card and then the rest of the cards are his abilities. We have Sagat. I'll open one of these, but I'm not going to open every single one. I want to open my favourite character from Street Fighter 2. Get your bets in right now for who it was. Then we have Vega. Oop. We have Ryu. We have Ken. And we have Chung Lee. So that's the characters you get in the base box. Ken was my main. So I'm going to open this and we're going to take a look. Alright, got them open. I wonder how many people clicked off when I said I was a Ken main. In Street Fighter 2, you know, I know they became legally distinct in the way they fought in later games, but they were him and Ryu were just identical back then. So that's his card, that's his move, that's his health, that's his ultimate. Some stats on the other side as well. And then you have the deck. It also kind of uses a combo system similar to the Devil May Cry miniature game, where you have to link in if you want to keep on doing attacks rather than one by itself. And you can burn attacks as well, again similar to the Devil May Cry game, to block if you don't want to try and do like a counter or or anything like that. These are nice feeling cards. They've actually got raised edge or raised backs. Huh. That is very nice quality. And the art on it is great. Three fierce Hadoukens. Three quick. Oh, is that a reference to the animated movie? It's very good if you haven't seen it. Poke. Okay, that's a keyword, and that's the attack type. So the first few were projectiles, then we're on to strikes. Forward step kick, which is a strike as well, a few of them. Hill wheel throw. Yep, I remember that throw very well. And then you've got the sh over the shoulder throw. Shoryoken, which is a special, has an attack, charge, and a different icon type, along with special rules for VS. Oh, maybe if you counter, so you've got tons of them. Wow. Hurricane Kick, that is fantastic art. Oh, that's great. Relentless Assault, Rush Down, Something to Fight For. I forgot how gigantic his eyebrows were. The Rich Kid, Ken's Huge Eagle, yep. Violent Hado, oh, is that Evil Ken and Evil Ryu? I'm not up on my, my lore. Shuru Repa, I don't remember how that's pronounced. Super plus knockback one or a free action. And then these are your bait actions. So the game does revolve around like trying to lure out attacks and then either countering or you know baiting a miss. Focus attack. Hmm. So they would need shuffled, obviously. And I, th I think the hand you have is a hand of five, but I might be misremembering. But yeah, those are really nice feeling. I can't get over the fact it's got a raised back. <laughs> so that is how a standard deck is, again. You want to keep them all separate because you don't mix and match between characters and you come with one each for everyone who comes in the box. And speaking of which, the only thing left to look at in the core box, and we do have a lot to get through, remember, so I'm not going to look at every individual deck, is the miniatures themselves. Alright, we'll start top left with Vega. Oh, or maybe not, he's in there tighter than I thought he was. Oh, good grief. I don't want to break it. Or my fingers, for that matter. If I had to pick between the two, I know which I'd pick. There we go. So again, pre-painted. I guess like the criteria by which you've got to match these is to things like Amiibos or Funko Pops or whatnot. 
It looks like the colour is definitely more deep than those examples and yeah, for the most part, it looks pretty cleanly applied as well. You could definitely like touch them up a little bit, like there's a little dollop there that someone's missed. But yeah, that's pretty good. And again, like at camera distance, at table distance if you're playing the game, it looks decent. It probably looks better than the paint job I'd do. So then we have oh, Chung Lee. I don't know if I want to risk trying to put him back in there. Okay, actually, he went back in so much easier. So there is Chung Lee. One of the stretch goals should have been Jackie Chan dressed as Chung Lee from that one movie where they did a Street Fighter parody. But yeah, again, really nice. I like the effect on the base too. Neat. I think she's in right. Oh, Ryu's stuck in there. There we go. Charging up his giant Hadouken. I like the different colours, it adds some depth, that would be nice if the darker blue was in there as well, but that's okay. Right down to like the markings on his, what do you call the belt for a gi, I don't remember. But yeah, very nice. I saw there's a little smudge on his knee, like there-ish, but nothing much. Yeah, it looks impressive. And the, the floor matches his level from two. Sagat with his tiger underwear. Also looks decent. You could definitely add more definition just by doing like a simple wash. But yeah, very nice. Actually surprised at how good the quality of that is. Like all of them. I was expecting like amiibo level. I know amiibos are fine, it's just uh, I'm not a fan of how they look. Oof, Zangief. Coming to give you a hug. His face looks a little silly, I will say that, but he is a little silly in general. He wrestles bears. He's a silly man in general. But yeah, again, very nice. Slightly disturbing chest hair, but again, that's just Zangief. Nope. He's not going to go back in peacefully. And then my man, Ken. There we go, doing his flaming uppercut. Shodio Ken, I should say. His mouth with those eyes look a little strange, but the pose itself is great. Like, you can feel the energy off of it, which I like. He is actually off the floor, so he's being held up by these parts. Are his gloves orange? Uh, they are in the art. I guess they are. I don't remember. I remember them being black. Hmm. I don't know. They're on the box as orange as well, so clearly I'm just misremembering. But yeah, very nice. So that is the core box miniatures. Before we jump straight into the next expansion, we're going to take a look at the stretch goals that anyone who just backed like even just this basic box also got. So as you can probably tell, this is the largest box that comes with the all-in pledge. It's bigger than the like core box, it's bigger than the expansion, and it is purely, I think, two or maybe even three layers of miniatures that are just stretch goals. So let's get this open. Oh, it opens like this. That's, that's very strange. I expected it to open up and out. It's throwing me for a loop. Why isn't this... Oh, there we go. It does. Car bonus level. So this is where the extra stickers come in. That's how to use the car bonus level. And then I presume the cardboard will be in here. And again, that's why you have the stickers. Because they are slightly misprinted. Bonus classic mode levels. Capcom. Oh, it's how to build a little league as well. And you get a little arcade machine. Nice. Alright, so we do have one layer of miniatures at the very least. What do we have underneath? A second layer of miniatures? Ah, some quality paper. And then the classic level, so it's just a tiny level meant for like just running at your enemies. That's the arcade machine. And yeah, that's uh, it's a tiny level instead of a four or two by two, it's a one by two. And two themed sides good quality as well. So we do have, oh there's the cardboard for the car. So that's the one that has the misprint does it? That's, the car comes pre-wrecked so I guess the cardboard to make it look not wrecked is in here. But yeah that's how it ends up. That is a, oh yeah there's an additional boss expansion boss included in a stretch goal. There's the cardboard. 
So yeah, one of these is a misprint. I'm not going to sit and piece it together right now to see. I think it's one of the bottom corners. But either way, that's why they give you the stickers to fix them. Then we have all the cards for the miniatures and a few more of the miniatures. Alright, so... Is this still taped on? It's not! Good! Okay, I can just lift it out then and push this back for a second. And we'll go back to looking at this roll first. Is this Evil Ken? I presume. He looks like uh, Phoenix What's-His-Face from Tekken. He's achieved at the level of Super Saiyan 1. Very neat. So maybe it's not Ken. I don't know. Look neat enough. Then we have an actual League trophy, I guess. That it feels a little um, like I should be giving it to a kid to to drink juice out of. A little, a little cheap that one. Oh, I've forgotten this guy's name. Again, forgive me. The newer characters, I'm not going to remember. I didn't play them enough. Oh, and he's stuck in there. Good grief. Like, I am applying a lot of force and he is not coming out of there. There we go. I'm scared to put that one back in. I do remember him. He fights Ken in the animated movie. <laughs> and I still don't remember his name, I just remember that he exists. And I could cheat by looking at his cards, but sadly he's not one of the ones on the top. So... I'll risk putting that back in. So then we have Balrog with his champion belt and doing his uppercut. Crazy Buffalo. Nice. I like the thematic bases. Paint job looks good. A little a tiny bit of scuff there. Just just a tiny bit. Oh, and a tiny bit there as well. Just a little bit of flaking, I think. E Honda doing his hundred hand slap. Ow. Has it bent a nail a little bit? That hurt. These are in here too tight. You know, I appreciate that they didn't do skin colour on the extra hands, because I feel like that would look a little bit too silly. So yeah, that looks neat. And again, it's got the bathhouse thematic base, which is excellent. So then we have Kylie Minogue. Oh, sorry, I mean Cammy. Uh, her tattoos on her legs could look better, or her camel paint or whatever it's supposed to be. Face is a little... iffy. Yeah, I would say the quality of this one in particular not that great. It's missing detail on the armor. Yeah, not too good that one. Guile doing his sonic boom. Again, very thematic base. It would look very at home on one of the core maps. It looks fine, yeah. His hair could be taller. That's the only complaint. So then we have, from is he Street Fighter Alpha, it's DJ. And I did cheat, I saw his cards over there. But this is DJ. I do remember him. Again, very nice. Maximum. I like the pose, I like that he's looking like this way, while also punching forwards. So like, he knows you're watching. It's a little bit of miss, like spilt glue on his arm there. So then we have, oh, there we go, get that in. This would be Evil Ryu, missing his heart. He has become a Dark Souls character. And he's powering up. Pretty neat. Yeah. Oh no. And then uh, the man who taught Ryu and Ken, was his name? Goken. I also cheated, I looked at the cards. His face is a little uh, silly. <laughs> I'm not so keen on his face. It's a, it's a little goofy looking. The rest of it though looks great. But yeah, he looks a little bit like, uh, oh, what's his name? Eric Eisner? A little bit. <laughs> Either way, so we still have a few more stretch goals to look at. Just put them to one side. Oh, it's heavier than I thought. It's because of all those cards, good grief. So these will look a little bit different, the Gokin cards, and probably... Oh, it's called Violent Evil Ryu, Violent Ken, I guess. Okay. Their cards might look a little bit different because the, the way the boss expansion works is different. So that'll be, this will be his the AI deck, probably. And we've got standard decks for all the characters. T 
T-Hawk. That was his name. I think I got everybody else's name right. Yeah, that is Evil Ryu. And then we haven't looked at some of these yet because they're in this box, but Blanca. And Dalsim. Or Dalsim. And then... Oh, Goken as a boss, but then you also get as a normal character if you want to use him as a normal character. Nice. And Balrog as well. So is this just like female M. Bison? Or is this an actual character? I, I don't know. If it is an actual character, it's from a more recent iteration of Street Fighter that I am not familiar with. They didn't appear to have a deck, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Is this a fan character? Oh, there we go. Everyone's favorite Bruce Lee parody. Doing a flaming kick. Almost looks like his uh, slipper is falling off because you can see the edges of his toes there. Cool looking. Also pretty cool looking ironically because he's breathing yoga fire. But does seem. I don't really get the blue. I don't remember the blue as part of his attacks. But I like that he's breathing fire. And then Lightning Man. Blanca. Would have liked if it was a different colour for his kind of yellow charging up. But yeah, again. And hopefully all these have been in focus. Looks nice, a little bit of glue spilt on his hair there. But yeah, okay. So that is all the stretch goal stuff. Now let's take a look at the actual other expansion. Okay, so the boss expansion. As I said, this kind of adds a cooperative mode for up to three people to take on a super strong AI i.e. M. Bison, for instance, or Akuma, or Goken from the stretch holes. So we have our boss rule book. 13 pages, again, if you include how to build up the scenery that it comes with. Looks like an evil version of one of the maps. How to use the AI, presumably. Chal or they call it challenge deck. How to set up the nemesis. And then how to assemble the extra scenery comes with. Oh, don't ruin what's in this other boxes. <laughs> so we have spooky trees. We have chicken boxes. We have rocks. We have chicken stands. Don't tell the chickens. We have tables. And then the, the kind of nighttime version of the map. And then also the, like, is that Chung Lee's level? I think it is. I, you can use those maps just for normal fighting as well. It doesn't have to be to fight the bosses. So you have the boss health bars, again we saw Gokin's in the other one, that's Akuma's, and Bison's, and then this will be AI related cards, Chal sorry again, they, they call them challenge cards, and then Nightmare Booster, scary, and then the same presumably for Akuma, standard deck in HP, oh yeah, sorry, those are just, these are if you just want to use them as, as normal. That's why it differentiates between the two types, I presume. The, the purple outline is the boss versions. Wrath of the Raging Demon and uh, Nightmare Booster with the purple highlights. Okay, so again, they, they still play with a full deck. And the only other things in the box are the two miniatures themselves for the bosses. Again, stuck in there pretty tight. This is the same pose Ryu is in, so I guess you could pose them against each other. Evil Hadouken, pretty nice looking, and of course the symbol on the back of his gi. Yeah, don't, I'm not noticing any like problems with that paint job. And then, M. Bison looking very impressive, very full of himself and uh, nothing like, what is his name, Raul Julia? I don't remember him being that swole. Although it was like Street Fighter V or whatever, they suddenly made everyone like jacked up on steroids, right? Still pretty cool looking, ready to do cycle crushers, etc. Yeah, so the primary purpose of this is just to add another way to play the game. And I believe there are some fans working on just like generic kind of AI decks. So you can do your own matches against normal people as well. Which I will be looking into. 
during these pandemic times. So that's all you get in that. Now we have the extra character add-on packs and an additional map pack. So there's actually four cardboard boxes here. We're going to work our way down in chronological order, starting with Street Fighter Alpha. I believe each box adds four characters, and these are slide-out ones. Which is a little more annoying to put back together again. Here we go. Not sellotaped on. I'm, I, I love that they're not sellotaped on. So I'm not familiar with Armika, but she is one of the characters. We of course have to get a character deck, so she's playable. Again, move, health, and then all the cards you would shuffle to draw hands when you're actually playing the game. We have Dan, of course, who is fantastic. We have Karen, who I do not remember at all, but hey, at least I remembered Sakura's name correctly. So you also get her deck as well. Now, did they skimp on the quality of the extra character packs? I don't think so. They look okay to me. Again, she appears to be a wrestler. Is that a chicken on her base? I guess. I'm not sure. Either way, she's talking to the crowd and has a sparkly thing. Sure. Dan's miniature, though, looks great. He's doing his rubbish little Hadouken. Dan's dojo less than $100, but now down to the bargain price of five dollars which is pretty excellent <laughs> why is he standing like that <laughs> he's showing off his butt which has some glue on it and a weird uncomfortable seam so this is Karen I do not remember her at all and I did play a fair amount of Street Fighter Alpha this is not in focus Karen why are you being there and of course the Karen is being problematic I shouldn't have said that so anyway there is her miniature. She's doing like a flower punch. Ooh, I like the base, very multicolored. When you mess with the Little Red Riding Hood too many times. And then Sakura, she's doing like her victory pose, I remember that. Yeah, and she has got her school bag on the base. The base, the like the dirt on the base does not look well painted. It looks like a wash that's a bit too thin. It looks like something I painted. But other than that, decent enough, I would say. Yeah. So that's one. Now we're going to move on to Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. So this is where I'm going to really have to start cheating to remember character names. I'll recognize like them as a design, just not their names. There we go, so we have Makato, we have Alex, we have Q, not to be confused with Q from Star Trek, and we also have Buki. I remember Buki, I think I, I played as a Buki. I, I seem to remember her scarf as well, like why is it around her neck like it's super tight for some reason. Didn't she do like judo or something, like she did a different fighting style? I'm, like, these are memories from like over 20 years ago. Might as well put this back in because it's going back in anyway. He's hopped up on two energy drinks. He can't be stopped. He's taken his shirt off and painted himself. Run. Nice coloration though. There's a little bit of depth in both like his trousers and muscle lines. Not too shabby. I have no memory of Q at all. <laughs> Oof. A bit of a shame he's on such a thick bit of like plastic under there to, to levitate him like that. Could have been done in a neater way, I think. But yeah, he is. I'm amazed at how much detail. I don't know if this is visible, but how much detail is on the newspaper on his base? Like there's individual pictures and stories. It's unbelievable. <laughs> And then a Buki with <laughs> Tanuki, I guess. A Buki and Tanuki. That's pretty awesome. Doing the same fighting pose. Very nice. Not sure it was necessary to have the throwing knife. She could have been like holding them ready to throw, but you know, it's not bad. Yeah, again, very nice. Alright. That is Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So you know what that means. Street Fighter 4. So this is going to be characters I am utterly unfamiliar with, probably. Judging by their silhouettes, can you guess who it is if you know the game better than me? 
Street Fighter 4 was one of the ones I did not play. Here we are. We have Cody, Final Destruction, C Viper, Burst Time, Guy, and Yuri or Jury? Not sure which. Feng Shui Engine. He looks like a Full Metal Alchemist character. He's got a knife. Not a Street Fighter. Well, I guess it is a Street Fighter for using a knife, but. That doesn't count as hand-to-hand -hand combat if you've got a knife. We only allow fireballs in this here place. <laughs> it's actually hard to pull some of these out because of how spiky the, the things in their base are. So doing like a flaming kick. Come on, get into focus. There we are. Almost the shield logo on our base. Yeah, neat looking. Uh, again, a little bit of glue visible there and there, which is a shame. Hopefully that's in right. There we go. There it is. Guy, who is a guy, he is doing lightning kicks. Or, well, it's very similar to the Ryu and Ken move, I guess. I'm not sure about the these parts here. They could have just been transparent as well, honestly. But it looks okay. And finally, Yuri, or Yuri. Also feet focused, apparently. Why is the camera suddenly having so many problems? I guess it's because of like the multi-layered and things spinning around them. Sin, it says on the base. S-I-N as an acronym. Hmm. Some kind of like spider marking on her back. Yeah. Okay, neat enough again, not characters I'm familiar with, sorry, so I can't I can't talk about them too much. But finally, most recent Street Fighter, Street Fighter 5. Alright, let's take a look at these final four characters, although there is still the map pack to look at. To end things off here, and what's probably been quite a long unboxing. Wow, it's a very large lad. So we have Laura, Rashid. Nikali, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, again not someone I'm familiar with, and Nash. Looks like he's part cybernetic, Judgment Saber. She kind of has a facial expression and general pose like it's a Jersey mom about to go to town on some fool. I don't necessarily mean that as an insult, just an observation. Let's even get in. I was avoiding getting in super close to everyone just because with all the, again, swirls and such, it's going to have a hard time focusing. The middle distance is kind of like the best part. Let's take a look at Rashid. I would say his face is maybe the worst one. Because it looks like one of the eyes is too low to his face. Or to his mouth, rather. The rest of the, the thing is great. I like the backpack. Yeah, he has like wind powers, right? I remember the trailer when he originally was released or created. He's got a very strange looking like loop on his beard. Neat. But yeah, a little bit of a botched job on his face there, I think. We'll end on that large lad because he looks very impressive. Let's take a look at Nash. He's definitely whipping up something. Not too keen on his coloration. Is Nash Guile's old partner or like flight? Person, am I, am I confusing that with someone else? Maybe go recreate with cybernetic bits or something. I don't know. Not that the lore particularly matters. See, yeah, this is a very impressive looking miniature. Well, mini miniature is very large. Can we get this one in close? I think that's in focus. Very detailed. Yeah, that's very, very cool looking. I like that a lot. Looks very, very intimidating. Not familiar with him at all. Not going to pretend to be. But that is, that's my, that may be my favourite miniature out of all of these, I think. It's just a very cool looking miniature. Hope it did the character justice. Again, I'm not familiar with them, but we have one last little box to open to finish off this video. 
I don't think there'll be much to see in here because it's just going to be a bunch of push fit cardboard but again this is an all-in unboxing this is part of the all-in pledge so let's just quickly take a look at the extra stuff you get here oh, clips for some reason not actually sure why stage diagram so you have e honda's bathhouse and it shows you the starting positions if you've got one two three characters on each side got the las vegas map as well vegas level oh wait no balrog's level sorry and then dalson's level complete with cardboard elephants oh and there's an actual bath for the bathhouse that's neat and then some Vegas casinos, some walling. Oh, the fence, yeah, that is Vegas. Like Vegas was outside and the Balrogs was inside. And there's how the elephants look as well. So yeah, this is just gonna be a bunch of the cardboard for the things we just talked about. I have no reason to doubt the quality based on all the other cardboard we've seen so far. It's good quality, thick stuff. Just gotta remember them. The elephants are actually a lot bigger than I thought they were. Just gotta remember like once you assemble these things you're not really gonna unassemble them so storage might be a bit of a problem just something to consider if you do go in for the extra stuff honestly that bath oh that's part of the cardboard falls out that bathhouse is just gonna be nice scenery in general there's like a 3d uh 3d sauna type thing and then the map themselves or maps themselves so that's the vegas outdoors level Double-sided? Yeah, double-sided. It's got the... I know it's upside down, but the Matador stuff on the other side. And then that's Dalsim's level. And then... It's on the other side of Dalsim's level. Oh, that's the bathhouse, of course. We could forget the man on the wall. Yeah, so that is all the extras. If you went all in on the Street Fighter miniature game, I'll just put this away real quick so we can take a look at the core boxes. Obviously I can't comment on how it plays or anything like that because I haven't played it yet. I'm, I like that there's an AI mode for fighting like the super tough bosses, etc. And fans are working on an AI mode in general just for normal matches, which is again important at times like these I feel. Happily surprised by the quality of the pre-painted miniatures that it came with as well. So you might see more of this in the future, the boss mode at the very least. Thank you for watching. If you want to check it out for yourself, so you fire the miniature game by Jasco Games, and yeah, go check it out if you're interested. And we might see more in the future. Thanks very much for watching. Sincerely, hope you enjoyed. See you in the future for something else. Start for now.